I've not even checked, to be honest. Why don't you have a little go? Yeah, can you tell us? You tell us. Don't forget the mummy, just go in gently. Pardon? <laughs> just getting there, because they've got a tendency to try and dominate the kids. When the kids get in, the youths get a bit, bit cocky. Right, you have a picker up, go on. Pick up like Daddy showed you. That's it. And then you tell Daddy. Who's that? Well, you have a look, well, you, you, you tell us. What is? I think we've managed to spray everywhere, but the night. <laughs> What is that? A girl. A girl. Well done. Well done, Marnie. What about this one? Let's have a look at this one. I know this one is going to be a boy. You were right. A boy. boy. Well yeah. done. Boy. Well done, darling. So hi, Betsy. How many more have you got um, to oh. lamb? So we've got three left. So we had 23. <clears throat> uh, we had five Cotswolds and 18 mules. Yep. Um, and I did the Cotswolds because there are only five. Obviously, I got a Cotswold top. And I did them about a week and a half, two weeks earlier than the mules. So f for me, that was about a week earlier than Jilly. She starts all her rare breeds a, a little She's bit earlier as well than her commercials. Things. But I thought if I do ours early and there's only five, then if we are struggling, I can ask Jilly and it's not too taxing for her. I'm not pulling her away from all her yeah. So that was the plan. And it kind of went all right, to be fair. Um, Manny. <laughs> <laughs> so that was good so the fact, yeah and, and the Cotswolds were, were, were great you know because yeah. they're such like good mums what, what, what I found is that as soon as they're in the main pen I brought them all in together I brought them all I think about f five or six weeks I kind of brought them all in I give them all the Eptovac and then I let them back out and then four weeks before, about two weeks before actually I think the Cotswolds were due I just brought, every, brought them all in so when they kind of lambed in the main pen as the minute I went over and got the lamb and you'll know, you know, you walk in the back, the mum just followed straight away. Yeah. Whereas because these are all shearlings, these mules, sometimes you put, and they just then they're off. Yeah. They're not really too bothered. You know, they don't know what to, to expect. So you then got to sometimes go back and get the actual mum and forcibly yeah. bring her in. Um, I think I was just kind of going off forums, asking questions. I, I, I think for us, most sheep farmers, and you know, I can be rightly so, it's what's going to be the most commercial value and your proper butcher's lambs but they are getting to the point where they're the hardest to land. They're the ones that you're gonna to have to be intervening with all the time. Yeah. And that's not what we want at all because we've not got that experience. So we went with breeds that are gonna be easy yeah. landers. So good mothers, instinct to the good mothers. Um, and so yeah, we picked mules because obviously they're a cross breed, but quite a hardy breed. Um, what is it, a blue faced Lester with a, um, a, a she, like a hill sheep. A, yeah. Um, she, what is it? It begins with S. Sweat. Sway, sway, a swale. Sw a swale, yeah. Swaledale. Swaledale. So that was the plan with, with those and to mix them with a the Texel. So when we went to market to get the Texel, I just like the look of the Texel. It was mm -hmm. either a Texel or a Suffolk. Yeah. And the Texels that day were looking great, but a lot of them now, they're like Arnold Schwarzenegger, but they've got the biggest heads. And then like Jack was kind of saying to me, if it's dead too big, you'll be lambing it, you know. So we tried yeah. to get one that had yeah. really good confidence, you know, a good build. Yeah. Uh, and it's weird that because I'm like, what's a good build? What's good? But you weirdly have a gauge of, when yeah. you spend all day at market, you're seeing what's going for what price. You can quite quickly see. And then towards the end, I was thinking, well, I think that's pretty good. And then I go to see what it gets in the stall. And, if it, and then I'm, Nine times out of ten, my instinct was yeah. was right. You know, yeah. was, I don't know what I, I've just felt that it was that looks like it's got a good shape, it's standing well, and all these things. And I look at him and think, oh, he looks nice. Yeah. We, and, I'm, mm. and I looked at this Texel, I would, I would, and I was like, he looks mega. And there's that thing of whether they corned up before and just to boof them up, so you don't know how. And Jilly said, just be mindful of that. And the owner, they're all going to send this out there. I'm like buying a second-hand car. <laughs> Oh, he's not been caught. You know, he's, I'm not trying to up. He's absolutely fine. That's what he's like. You know, in other words, he'll stay like that for the next three months. Whereas sometimes I've heard that you buy them like that. If you, yeah. A couple of months later, they're just deflated and they're a shell and of a form of cells. they've lost those conditions. They've lost loads of Anyway, this came in and, um, but he was mega. And you know what? He's been out. He's not lost any condition. He's absolutely yeah. spot on. So, so yeah, we, we, the reason why, going back to why we chose that breed is because we wanted something that you're not really going to be intervening with a lot. Well, it's vital in this, as I'm sure when we expand, you know, then, then absolutely we will need help. But for me, it's crucial 
I don't get that help straight away because I won't know what my business yeah. is. If I'm, you know, I've run businesses before, from the outset, I need to know how it's, yeah. I need to learn for myself, even make mistakes and not kind of delegate to the experts just yet. And then once you're up and running, you understand from the ground up, then you know, right, I, I'm not good at that bit. Now I need to bring someone in who can manage that bit. But I need to know for me how, how this is done or, or you know, what works, what doesn't work. And as we expand inevitably and with my day job as well, and our lifestyle, you know, we will have to bring people in. But I think for me, that'll be a token of of us succeeding because when we're having to bring people in, it means that we're kind of we're yeah. expanding and we're, you know, don't get me wrong, I've got no plan. We're not going to be on a big commercial scale. That's not what we want. For me, that's not where I think we need to go as an industry. Mm -hmm. I think smallholders need to be absolutely encouraged and, and allowed to kind of grow because, like anything in life, balance is key. And it, it, for me, over farming is you know, a bit controversial, but I think that's what damages a lot of, uh, a, a lot of, you know, the way, the way things are done. So I think encouraging and, and find your market. And for us, we're never gonna be selling to, into supermarkets, but for our produce, if we're going direct to market, then we can afford to maybe go a little bit niche mm -hmm. and, you know, with, with a good marketing. Definitely. And I think when you mentioned the fact that you've got day job as well, it's something for us that we see a lot. You're not just a farmer yeah. and whether that is another job on the side whether that's the fact that okay so that lamb's a bit poorly you turn into a vet for a bit you, yeah. you know you turn into you're an accountant because you're running yeah. a business and you turn into all roles which i think is sometimes underappreciated that you've got to yeah you, obviously you can outsource stuff when it gets to that stage but you've got to know so many different things yeah. to have livestock and to be farming so and not just that be a busy parent yeah you know you've got that on top of it and there is just so much to it that i think people don't think about you think about a farmer in a field and you think oh it's an old man with his flat cap and his stick and he's you know but it's not yeah, you know there's so yeah. many young diverse different people coming in the industry now yeah so we should meet it's good to see people like you encouraging that you know yeah. and how has the reception been as well because obviously such on the farm We've found it very, very I loved interesting. It. <laughs> and I guess Lizzie in particular, because kind of the questions that you're asking and feeling your way through really, really resonate. But what, what's the reception been like? It's been amazing. Really, yeah. really amazing. Um, on, on many different levels. First of all, when we did the TV show, that was kind of, um, I was working in the BBC and developing projects elsewhere. And that was, that all came out because of Zoom, I think, really. Yeah. Where the meetings, what would have been in person, was suddenly. Uh, over Zoom, we had boxes in the background, we were moving house, and that was a, a bit of an ad-lib chat where we're in the process of moving house, we've bought a farm, really? And then suddenly that kind of, that's where it kind of all came about. And there's obviously massive appetite for that type of show anyway. We were massive fans of Kate Humble, um, the Yorkshire fans, there's all so many of those shows that have been so successful because what they deliver, all individually doing so, but an insight into the sector, an insight into that, going back to being at one with nature, that wholesome living, yeah. it's just good TV, it's informative, you learn something. You're learning about what we eat as a nation, you know, the, 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 there's an industry there, the work that goes behind it, the care, it's yeah. just like, it's it's incredible to get an insight. So all these programs do that, and we were just one of another program that we're doing it in a slightly different way. Yeah, I kind of like that you took everything really back to like, I don't want to say basics, but you were just asking the questions as if, as if I just bought a farm. You yeah, know, yeah. and I think that really kind of resonates with people because people don't know. I mean, just terminology in itself. Yeah, you know, yeah, I yeah. didn't even know what a U was. No, no, I'm you know, saying, yeah, like yeah. I remember we had that conversation. It's like, what's a U? What's a talk? <laughs> what's a yow? Like, <laughs> it's like you need a dictionary for this yeah, thing. Yeah. <laughs> and that, at this bit, it was always quite hard because you, you watch some of these shows, you go on forums, you go on websites, you get the Farmers Weekly, whatever it is. There's an already an assumption that you that you know that you know. So you, you, you can read articles and you can be absolutely a, a bit of a, you know, you, there's, a, there's a website, is it the, the, the accidental smallholder? That's pretty good because yeah. it does put it in layman's terms. Yeah. And some people might feel daft to say, ask that question, but I certainly wasn't because, well, I've never needed to know the difference. I always say, you know, yeah. Jilly might laugh when I used to ask, what's the difference between haylage and silage or- I've done this. Yeah. How many Jilly's, times Jilly's, I never, Jilly, Jilly's never been to London. And that's that's. Well, I, Becca's I've never been to abroad. London once every couple of weeks. Yeah. And and, and that to me is is nothing. What for just yesterday I got you know from leaving London at six thirty a.m. to yeah. Silverstone testing all day and then I was lambing at night. Yeah. 
but so it's just you've got to understand and appreciate that people's lives are a little bit different and there's no there's nothing wrong with admitting it's that not ignorance is it it's not ignorance it's no, because no, why yeah. would you have have known why would you have needed to know yeah um and i mean we just learn from each other all the time yeah. right because i think that's a really important point they make about julie as well i have i've been to london a handful of times yeah. the social media side i've had to learn from lizzie and and whatever the whole marketing everything the writing side is mm. all new to me i'm still an expert not an expert on farming but that's kind of my area yeah. your area is completely different but you're still all contributing to a wider industry, picture, yeah. And, yeah. and you're passionate about it. So that, that's the credibility right there. That's the that shows you how authentic you are. Regardless yeah. of what you're doing, how you're doing it, how successful, how big you are. If you've got half an acre and you've got three sheep and you've got a love, then for me, you're as worthy and you're pl you've got as strong a voice as the dairy farmer I love who's that. got 300 head of cattle because that you're showing an absolute you know, energy and, 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 and a just an honesty for, for the sector. And for me, that's got to be welcome. I that's love got to be that. Championed. I absolutely love that because I think sometimes, I mean, coming into the industry, you think, am I going to be accepted because I'm not from a farming background? Yeah, yeah. Are people going to think that I'm not serious about it? Well, no, I still, you know, I love um, farming. I love animals. I love produce. I love my food. I love knowing like where things come from and supporting British. And just because I'm not day to day in the field doesn't mean no, I'm yeah. less mm -hmm. of a, like value the industry. Yeah. So yeah, I love that. What um, which user left to lamb? Should so have these look? she lambed yesterday. Yeah. Uh, and the other um, N1 she lamb yesterday. So they both had a set of twins, um, boy and girl respectively. Oh, and then this, this one, one was this morning. So. Oh. This morning, there was three lambs in the pen and two ewes that had lambed. So each ewe had a lamb with her. And yeah. there was just one little lamb on its own. So I tried the little lamb with her and she was headbutting. And I'm getting, you know, instinctively mm. you think she's obviously rejecting him. Yeah. yeah. So then I've tried it with either you. Yes, down in two seconds. And, um, and I just feel like she's, she's the rightful mother. Yeah. So can we, can we, can we have a look? Have yeah. A look? yeah, have a look. This is something which people find quite interesting. Definitely. It, it is interesting because <clears throat> not all of these sheep immediately bond with their lambs. Mm -hmm. So obviously she is in this adventure. Yeah. Um, so what's the purpose of it? What does it do? You'll know more than me. So yeah. if, I'm, if I'm saying this wrong, then please <laughs> interrupt and, and put me right. But um, this, I guess, is a pretty... You know, it does what it says on the team. It's a device that you can see that uh, it, it, I, I, she's nah. comfortable, I think. You know, nah. it, it looks like maybe she's not, but all it's doing is just making sure it's not squeezing nah. her neck, but it's just making sure that it's not wide enough for her head to go back in. Yeah. So she's got nah. enough mo room to move around. Obviously, she's got water there, and I've given her some corn before. Nah. This is just to keep her still, and then the lambs can then feed off her. So you keep her here for a couple of days or so, and it, it restricts her movement. And she's kind of somewhat forced to just accept the lamb suckling off her. And is that to allow her to accept them? Or is this just to kind of get the, the milk into them straight up? Do you Both know what I mean? Real, I think, I yeah. think it's to make sure they get fed. Yeah. And also that once they've had her milk, they'll start to smell of her. So then when she's released, she'll smell them and, yeah. and they'll, she'll just think that they, they are her. So when we turn them out, hopefully she'll have adopted them and she'll She'll so you them. won't have really a rejected lamb then that you'll have to, you know, um, hand rear. Yeah. You'll have hopefully adopted on, which is great. Yeah. So I hopefully. think a lot of people that outside... Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right? That <laughs> yeah. Actually, and I think the point you make about the smell is really important mm. because obviously once they've had some of her milk, they'll, the smell passes on. And that <laughs> kind of is why, well, that is why when you, if you have a dead lamb and you had to adopt that, that's why the skinning or if you cover them in um, the kind of afterbirth and stuff, which is yeah. after lambing, that smell thing is so important for anim animals in general, yeah. um, but particularly with sheep in this scenario. Have you seen when they skin the Yeah, lamb? I've not seen them do it, but I've but seen, you've seen the seen it. jacket go on. When yeah. I first saw it, I was like, what is going on? But it's like a little gilet, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah, a little gilet yeah. for like lambs. And actually, if you can save a lamb or even a youth from like Man. having that heartbreak as such, yeah. it's, it's all better for the welfare. But for me, that I mean, they'll have been doing that for hundreds of years. Yeah. And that's what I just find fascinating. Mm. And, and there's no, very little yeah. industries now are still doing things at absolute basic level. And I think the best thing about this industry is you've got the technology that's coming in that's incredible, that's changing, giving yields and doing yeah. all these great things. And then you've still got practices like that. Yes. And the yeah. two can absolutely work in harmony. And yeah. it, for me, like an outsider looking in, you just think it's just yeah. fascinating. Yeah. It is. And I think that's the particularly the, the lamb skinning thing. 
is a really, really good example of why we need to educate around a whole topic like that. Because if that was seen a standalone skinning a very, very newborn lamb, mm. it seems pretty cruel and quite shocking, to be honest. Yeah. But explaining all the reasoning behind it, which is kind yeah. of what we're aiming to, what you're aiming to with the programme as well, and, and you know, with your sheep here, explaining the whole story around why decisions are made, I think the picture just becomes really, really clear. Yeah. Um, and oh, look at the little so girl. This is a really, yeah, good sign. Yeah. Is it feeding? It is. And what it means is that she can't turn around and headbutt yeah. it and knock it away. What's interesting is that's the adopted one. Oh. So that it's good that she's feeding, but what I've been worried about, I've not yet seen her, her other lamb yeah. that she was fine with feed yet. So whether right. I've got a full tummy, I'm hoping that I got a full enough tummy earlier on, so yeah. she's not really wanting to feed. The fact that she's not, yeah. so she's feeding now, that's good, but in the next couple of hours, I'd probably like to see her at some point get yeah. up and hit him or her. Yeah. I didn't see the pigs, did you? I, I brought them, keep escaping. So the pigs live in the woods. Oh, yeah. And I just keep expanding their, their bit. But the idea is, is that they, we've got like best part of 30 acres of woodland. So certainly in sections, the, 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 the pigs, as mm -hmm. we um, start to farrow them, get them in pig. And we, I wanted to get like between, half a dozen and a dozen breeding cells yeah. and, and just have, you know, because they're the rare breed, I don't want to over get them in pig too much, but one litter a year would, would be fine. Yeah. So what breed are they? These are Oxford Sandy and Blacks. Yeah. Yeah, we've, we've let them grow and they're good size, good length, they've got good teats. They're huge. So the, the idea is that we're going to, we're about to breed these next month. Amazing. And we're either going to do it with getting an Oxford Sandy and Black in, male, yeah. and do, you know, pure breed. Mix them instead with a petrum but a uh, uh, um, boar, you know, so they give a pretty good. I mean, again, they look like a text, so they look so muscular yeah. as a crossbreed. Or maybe explore artificial insemination, and then we can get three different breeds, so maybe a Tamworth, an Oxford Sandy Black, and a petrum, and just see what the offspring is like. Because we're still, what I want to do, I'm speaking to Butcher in a minute, is to, same with the lambs, go to the butchers, get some meats done, and see what our, how our, li yeah, our livestock are. Yeah. to what we've produced mm -hmm. and to see if out then that's the interesting bit if I want to make any tweaks then because if we if we go to market and start going mm -hmm. to consumers but I think for us to get some of the lambs to see how they cut out and the same with the pigs see what it's like yeah. and I think right we'll try and mix in a different male this or a different yeah. breed and just see how what the what the end pro we're all going for the end product yeah. to see what the end product is like and for me it's just your own farm, your own way of doing things. Yeah. That'll be the best way to do it. But we're still learning. Yeah. We're, I was still very much of the consumer that, you know, cheaper is better. Yeah, I'm not paying that for that. I want to go, but as now, you understand the process. And it, I've not got it in me to pay. Something's cheap, it's cheap for a reason. There's been a compromise, either the animal, the farmer, but somewhere along the line. And it's not fair that there's a compromise. So it's not right. So even now, my attitude has changed as a consumer that I want to, make a point of, yeah. no, you know, you pay for what you get. And, yeah. and, and it's only right that I want to pay a premium. That's the weird thing now. I want to pay a premium yeah. because I, I want to get a good product and I want to make sure along the line that everyone, because I know the work, I'm getting an insight. So the work that goes, goes on is, is incredible. So that's got to be rewarded. Like, you know, if you've got a joiner working or a plaster or a, a dentist, whatever the job is, they're doing a good job. They're doing their, what their skill is. That's should be paid with the right amount of money. You want to, and it happens in every other sector. Why can't it happen in this sector? You know, now we've thankfully understand that less is more, and it really is. You know, we've got so much we're so used to consuming, is that you don't, if you've not got the budget, yeah, you can still eat well. You don't, you know, you don't have to have that uh, luxury of being able to have premium. You can still eat well and go locally, get locally sourced yeah. things, and it just takes a little bit more effort a little bit more education. But once you've got that, that's the hard bit. Once you realize that you can still spend the same or if not spend less than you have been yeah. with your cheap meals and your fast food, you know, you can actually educate yourself. It's just a little bit more work. And, and as a society, we just want it now easy. And, yeah. and that convenience is what we need to just scale back a little bit and go back to just yeah. putting a little bit of effort in and cooking a meal, you know, and, and understanding the different cuts and not even foraging as such but you know there's so much yeah. more out there we, our diet has kind of just gone like that yeah there's probably four or five things that people eat and that's it you know, when, and when I say people you know maybe look you know lower income families and, and that's my background I, I'm you know working class my family my cousins my brothers yeah. my parents are still very much in that so I feel like I can speak on their behalf yeah. as well so um, even us as growing up 
we didn't really have an education as such as what, what if, when I go to my nan and granddad's, we, there was no leftovers. Your leftovers goes into casserole or whatever. So that's, that's the generation thing different where my parents and my age group now and, and, and after, we're not used to that. We're just buying you. We're just buying you again because it's so, and you've got to you get, you know, used to taking everything on, not throwing anything away. Yeah. No, I think it's such it's, an important point. It is, it is. And that's one thing we were talking about earlier. Like my grandparents used to take me to the butchers and they'd get all their meat there. Now, we were speaking to a farmer the other day who said, you're now even taking away that kind of going into supermarkets and having the choice. You've got deliveries. You know, it's click, click and collect. Everything's yeah. online. You're not even kind of going to the shop and picking your own produce. And looking. And looking, yeah. And I think that's, it, yeah, we're becoming more detached in some ways, more yeah. than others. So yeah, I think it's really important that we do this. I just hope there's a continue, I hope there's more, it's, you know, it's sometimes easier said than done, small farmers out there, because yeah. for me, any industry, when it gets monopolized and, and, and there's just a handful of big players, it, it's just no good for nobody, yeah. you know, and the consumer is, there's always a compromise really. And the only people are benefiting are the ones that are, you know, lining the pockets. Yeah. If you encourage more smaller enterprises to thingy up, then we've, we've got a stronger voice. Yeah. And, 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 and we can all get something for that. If not, it, it feels that sometimes the small holders or the smaller players are just getting diminished. The big players are, are there and, and, you know, yeah questionably is, is that best for the consumer is that best for the people who are still within that industry you know you don't yeah. be pushed out you want to make sure you've got a voice and if you're only a small chap then i'd like to still think you've, you've got a voice you should have a voice so